Hello! Do you want to know how to make a book binding fold card? Yes? Come on, let's check it out in this video. So this is a book binding card. It has that extra spine on the end. So I've had a number of requests how to make one when I shared one recently. I'm going to show you that one at the end, so make sure you stick around. But this one uses the sweet cup of tea bundle and the gorgeous tea boutique designer series paper. I'm going to show you the measurements. We'll run through the cards that's in metric and in inches, but the me the measurements will be on my blog later. So be sure to check back on that. So let's grab our pieces that you'll need. Your base card, 10.5 centimeters by 28 centimeters or four and a quarter by 11 inches. This is scored at 11.5 centimeters and 14 centimeters or four and a half and five and a half inches. You'll need a piece of, you need a couple of pieces of your designer series paper. I've actually just used the reverse of this one from the T Boutique designer series paper. You can use different patterns, you can use whatever you'd like. You'll need a larger piece, and that is 11.1 centimeters by 10.1 centimeters, or four and a quarter by four inches. You'll need your other piece is 2.1 centimeters by 10.1 centimeters, or three quarters of an inch by four inches. You'll need a piece of white card that is the same size as your larger DSP piece. That's gonna be for your inside. I've just had an extra off cut of DSP and I'm just going to put that inside to decorate. I'll show you that a little bit more later. And then it's whatever you want to decorate the front. I'm using the cup of tea bundle, but so I'm using a white die cut circle. I'm using the stylish shape style for this one and some other pieces for die cutting your cup as well as parts for your stamping and cinnamon. So let's get started making it. Just a quick little reminder before we start, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Share it with your friends. If you want to catch more projects, be sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube so you won't miss out on them. So now we've got all our pieces, let's get started. Taking your base card, you want to fold that on your score lines. Just grab your bone folder and you're going to give it a rub along the spine there and fold this one on the edge back. So that's your basic, so that's your basis of your card. Let's glue these pieces together, just adding using whatever adhesive you want. Adding our larger piece. Just add that on that section. Be sure to stick the glue on the right side of the paper. Now with our scrap pieces, we're going to die cut our teacups. I like to layer these because they're so nice to layer them together. So we have a detailed one from the Sweet Sorbet and this outline from Petal Pink that I'm using. So I'll just run through that die cut machine with that. So I've die cut these out ready to put together. It just reminded me while I had these dies I wanted to show you a little tip. What I've done to keep my dies together is I've just added some strips of magnetic sheet. I think I've just used a fridge magnet that we've got in the mail or something and I've just 
put those so we have the dies all together, especially when we have lots of little dies in this set. For some of my die sets, I have a larger piece of magnet that will keep the whole pieces together. But for this one, I've just used strips. So I just thought I'd let you know while we were talking using these dies. So now that let's put our teacup together. You could use the adhesive sheets to die cut your cups out, but I just use little dabs of glue and just tiny, tiny little dots. Just, I run around it using the multi-purpose glue. I use this glue for everything, except for your ribbon and also except for larger embellishments. You use glue dots or things for those or your seal adhesive. But for these, for card and paper, I just use the multi-purpose glue. And I just run around adding little dots around the outline. Or little strips if you want to, if you get a bit in a hurry. Don't squeeze the glue too much. If you find there's too much, I'll just dab some off on a scrap paper. And line that up and stick that together. So we just thought, I just thought I'd do this now so that can be drying. Now that's there, we'll let that dry. We'll get, we'll just adhere these pieces inside together. So you'll need some stronger tape. I'm using tear and tape. You might use some seal. You can use the multi-purpose Tombow glue, but you'll just have to hold it a little more longer to make sure it sticks. Add those little strips of the tear and tape. Fold that over and just press that down to seal. So if, as I've mentioned, if you're using the, the multi-purpose adhesive, you're going to have to hold that a little bit longer. And then you can see how you've got that little spine happening. So I'm just quickly going to stamp up some leaves for our teacup now. So I'm using the Parakeet Party for the larger leaf in the stamp set. So just give that a bit of an ink up. And then I have garden green for the smaller leaves. We'll just add a couple of those. I can use that little white piece rather than Stamping on that great big piece. Add a couple of little leaves. So we'll go and die cut those out now with our dies. We have, it's great that we have two of the little dies so we can do them all at once. And we have the outline of the leaf. So we'll just run and cut those out. Okay, let's get rid of these bits and we're going to put our leaves together behind the teacup. To do that, just add a bit of adhesive on there. Stick that behind there. Before I stick it down too hard, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of glue on this leaf. So I can just tuck that under before it sticks too hard. So we have a tiny little leaf there. And then this one, add another little dab of glue there.
We want to add dimensionals now, just on our circle. Just add a few around the circle. And add a little, uh, a few on the back of your teacup too. And your leaf, just add a few there. That's why I like the little ones, because you can just add a few around. Um, they seem to go further. You don't need a huge amount of dimensionals. To that on there. I like to put that on first before I tie the ribbon on just so then I know where to position the bow. Now we'll grab that. I'm using to do that I'm going to turn I'll just give you a tip about tying those ribbons because uh, sometimes people struggle with bows and that's totally understandable. You just want to wrap it around and I turn my project to the side. Move that roll over that way. Just give a little tie, just tips on tying this. Pull it under there. Now just stick your finger in the center there while you do bunnies. So I do two loops and they can be larger than what you want because it's much easier to work with. Now you'll notice I've still got my finger positioned where those two, where the, the ribbon crosses over, shall we say that. Uh, hold that down, that keeps it tight. So I'm going to Pull that through, loop that loop through there. I've still got that other finger down on the, the, the ribbon. And slowly ease that out as you pull it. It doesn't matter, it will be a little bit loose. Now I don't know if that helped you or you could see very much. But the idea was to hold that ribbon down while I tied the loops and I tied them in bunny ears. So you have a little tiny bow. And if you want it up a little bit higher, we can just give it a wiggle, pull up. Now, then you can adjust your ends to how you want. We'll shorten it. I do have an extra bit of length there, but I wasn't gonna to worry too much about making it too short. You can adjust that. If you find that's too loose, just grab a glue dot and just grab a glue dot and stick that under there and that will secure that a little bit more from jiggling around. We'll hold that there. I'm going to shorten these little lengths a bit more too. So there you have that part. Don't forget your inside. I'm not going to complete the inside now, but let's have bring that other card back in so you can see it. So I've added a sentiment. The sentiment is from the go-to greeting scent. I seem to use that all the time. And let's have a look inside. I've just added that strip of DSP and stamped some leaves in there. So that is your bookbinding fold card. I hope that was clear. Let's have a look at another one. This one I used, the Adventurous Journey stamp set. And the designer series paper I used on this one was the Celebrate Everything stamp paper which is available as a host paper pack from the mini catalogue. It's got some great prints in in the pack 
and inside I have just stamped some of the water swirls and the lilies. So, bookbinding card, I hope you have a go at that. Tell me what you think. I'd love to uh, see your version of it when you create them. So thanks for watching with me and I'll catch you in another video soon. Bye.